Rinso, R-I-N-S-O, Soapy Rich Rinso presents Boston Blackie, starring Chester Morris. Hello? Is Mr. Manleather there? Why, no, I'm sorry he's not. This is his secretary, Miss Rochelle. Can I help you? Yes, you can deliver a message for me. I've been trying to reach him all day. This is John Partridge, president of the Morton National Bank. Mr. Partridge? But, well, Arthur Borden is president of the Morton Bank, isn't he? Not since yesterday, he's not. Give this message to Mr. Manletter, please. Tell him that his notes to the bank were due and payable on Monday of this week, and we must have our money. But, Mr. Partridge, we, we showed our books to Mr. Borden only last week, and... He agreed to extend the notes until our accounts receivable came in. Our business is in fine shape, Mr. Partridge. Our books prove it. Please tell Mr. Manletter that we'll accept our money in the morning, Miss Rochelle. But it's $100,000. We can't possibly raise that money overnight. I'm sorry. That's Mr. Manletter's problem. Goodbye. $100,000. Hello, Jean. Mr. Manletter, the bank just called. There's a new president and they... And they want to foreclose on my notes. How did you know? I read this letter. I got it at the house this morning. Here, read it. If you want to know how to prevent the bank from foreclosing on your note, have your friend Boston Blackie visit a house at 50 Hunter Street at 7 o'clock this evening. Signed a friend. Mr. Manletter, what does that mean? I don't know. I can't see any connection between the bank and Blackie. But I do know I won't ask him to go to Hunter Street. Well, can we raise $100,000 for the notes overnight? Uh, I don't think so, but I'll try. Only there isn't much hope. Then you must call your friend Blackie. No, it can only mean trouble for Blackie. I don't know how or why, but it must be trouble for him if I'm being forced to ask him to go there. But Blackie thrives on trouble, Mr. Manletter, and it'll save your business. No, I won't call Blackie. I'm going out to try to raise the money. You'll hear from me later. All right, sir. Alice, will you call a number for me, please? Get me Boston Blackie. Get me Boston Blackie. Four words that the weak use to call their champion. You know, some expressions seem so natural and right, we use them all the time without even thinking, like ruby red and sky blue and so on. Well, what I get a particular kick out of is the fact that we've added a new one to the nation's vocabulary. Yes, I hear tell that nowadays you ladies say rinse white when you want to talk about really white clothes. Of course, there's a mighty good reason why rinse gets your clothes so white. rinse soapy rich suds won't take no for an answer from dirt. They pitch right in in your tub or washer and go to town. Yes, rinse gets out more dirt. And that's why you ladies are able to turn out those beautiful rinse white rinse bright washes. So next wash day... Whistle for the kind of wash you're proud to hang on your line. Like this. <whistles> and remember, it stands for Rinso White. Now, meet Chester Morris as Boston Blackie. Uh, tell me, Blackie, which one of these girls do you like best? T- come on, take a look at their pictures. Come on, will you? <laughs> All right, Shorty. I'll judge your personal beauty contest for you. Now, this blonde here... Yeah. Hold it, Shorty. I'll get the phone. Hello? Blackie? Yes. Blackie, this is Jean. I had to call you. Mr. Manletter's in terrible trouble. Hey, come on, will you, Blackie? Come on, get off that phone. I gotta know about this redhead. Lay off, Shorty. Uh, what is it, Jean? What's the matter with Arthur? The bank called an hour ago. I've been trying since then to reach you. They're going to take over the business if Arthur doesn't redeem his notes for $100,000 by tomorrow morning. Well, they, they, they can't do that, Jean. Yes, they can. The notes are overdue. Hey, boss, what about this brunette? Now, come on, come on, will you? Quiet. Uh, not you, Jean. Uh, look, honey, I haven't anywhere near 100000 and I wouldn't know where to go to get it by tomorrow morning. I didn't expect you would, Blackie, but Mr. Manletter received a message saying that if you come to 50 Hunter Street at, 12, at 7 o'clock tonight, the notes will be renewed. If I go to 50 Hunter Street, well, what does that mean? I don't know, Blackie. But if I show up, they'll renew? That's what the note says. Mr. Manletter knew you'd be in some kind of danger if you went, and he wouldn't ask you. Oh, don't worry, chick. You'll hear from me. Bye. 
So you finally got done. Now, come on, help me. Look at it. See, I got 50 pictures here. Pick out the one I should pin up on my I wall. I can't huh? do anything about your pin-up problem now, Shorty. Oh. I've got something at 50 Hunter Street that I've got to pin down. Hey, what is this? Sounds like a record. Hey, you behind that desk. You in the mask. What is this? Come on, talk. First of all, Boston Blackie, don't try anything foolish. There's one of my men behind you with a gun. Now that you've turned around to see, (laughs) let me tell you that you are listening to this recording which I made because I don't want you to know what my voice sounds like in person. A record, huh? Well, personally, I prefer Harry James. Blackie, I want you to listen carefully to what follows. Have you anything to say? Sure I have. I hope you'll... Okay, boss. Take the record off. He's out cold. I uh, hope I didn't hit him too hard, boss. There's no sense killing him. The law is going to do that for us very soon. Gee, Blanky, where you been? I've been having pups. Well, I hope they look like their mother. Well, I'm back, Shorty, only I'm not the same guy. You should have had your head examined for going down to that Hunter Street joint. Yes, I, I had it cracked. That's worse. Take a look at this, Shorty. A bullet hole? Yeah. In your coat pocket. Who'd you shoot, Blanky? I didn't shoot anybody, Shorty. Somebody slugged me, and when I woke up, my gun was gone, and this hole was in my pocket. I must have been out for hours. It's, uh, it's almost 11 o'clock. I called Jean, and she told me the bank renewed man letters notes the minute I showed up at the Hunter Street place. Somebody sure took an awful crack at you, hey, Blanky? Yeah, it's more than that, Shorty. Only how much more and exactly what, I don't know. Uh, get my robe, will you please? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure, boss. Uh, give me your coat, and I'll hang it over this here chair. Well, here it is. Blanky, uh, what do you make of this business this afternoon? Uh, I don't make it. It's got me stumped. Yeah, me too. Well, here's your robe. Thanks. I think I'll lie down and relax for half an hour. Uh, would you mind fixing me some coffee, oh, Shorty? sure, sure. Have it free in just a minute, boss. Thanks. Hello, Blackie. Glad to see me? Well, Inspector Faraday, of course <laughs> I'm glad to see you. <laughs> Which goes to prove how easy I am to please. Ha, <laughs> ha, very funny. Well, Blackie, I think you overdid it this afternoon. Well, my head sure feels like I did. That isn't what I mean. Did you ever hear of a private detective named Fred Visual? That crooked Jamis? Yeah. Oh, sure, I've heard of him. And he's heard of me, too, Faraday. I got the guy's license suspended when he tried to blackmail me. A uh, old couple of friends of mine, you know, last year. That's the guy. He didn't like you, Blackie. You know, I'd feel a whole lot worse if you said Rita Hayworth didn't like me. You didn't like him either. I hate rats, Faraday. Come on, what's all this about? Nothing. Only Visual was found shot to death an hour ago. What? Huh? I'm taking you in for his murder, Blackie. Now, let's get going. Now, look, Faraday, you've done ridiculous things every day of your life. <laughs> but right now, you're borrowing from next week. What makes you think I bumped off this wall? I don't think it. I know it. We've got your gun, and it's got your fingerprints on it. Oh. We found it near Viswell's body. And if I'm not mistaken, isn't that a bullet hole in the pocket of this coat of yours on the chair? You fired from your pocket. Well, maybe I burned the hole with a cigarette. Uh, No cigarette ever burned a hole like that. Come on, let's get going, Blackie. Get dressed and hurry up. Take off that robe, put a coat on. You're coming with me. Come on, take that robe off. All right, all right. Pretty robe, isn't it? Too bad you won't be allowed to wear it in jail. You like this robe, Inspector? Mm -hmm. Well, here, take a good look at it. Lovely. Take a good look at it. Right over your head. (laughs) Shorty, shorty. Yeah, yeah, I'm right here, boss. I was waiting for a signal for him before I conked him. Well, help me tie him up, Shorty. We'll use the cord from the robe. Now, quiet, (laughs) Inspector, quiet. Don't you know it's impolite to talk with your mouth Mm -hmm. full? You'll be tied up like a chicken in just a little minute now. Uh, Well, I know what the score is now, Shorty. Somebody's fixed it to look like I knocked off Fred Visual. Yeah, I heard. In a very pretty picture, is it, boss? I'm not worried about the picture, Shorty. I'm worried about the frame. Who is it? Who's there? Let me in, Jean. Hurry. It's Blackie. Blackie? Oh, thanks. Hi. I'm sorry about coming to your apartment at this hour, Jean, but I couldn't reach you on the telephone. Well, they closed the downstairs switchboard at midnight. Oh. What is it, Blackie? What's wrong? I need information, Jean. I need all you know or can remember. There's some connection between a private detective named Fred Viswell and somebody at the Morton National Bank. Now, 
Who was it that spoke to you on the telephone? The new president. Oh. His name is John Partridge. Well, that's the man I'm going to see. Faraday's on my trail again, Jean, and I've got to clear myself. Oh, you'll never be able to get into the bank to see Partridge, especially if Faraday has a dragnet out for you. As soon as you show up, they'll throw you in jail. Oh, and don't worry. I'll figure out a way to get in to see him. But if I don't get anywhere with Partridge, I'm a dead duck. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Partridge. Good morning. Oh, I left your mail on your desk, Mr. Partridge. Thank you. I'll be in my office if anyone wants me. Now don't open your mouth, Partridge, or this gun will shut it permanently. Why? What? What do you want? Aren't you one of the special police that protects the bank? Oh, well, don't let this uniform fool you. I wore it just to get in here. And keep away from your desk. You know, I'm allergic to the sudden pushing of buttons. Ah, that's better. Now, do you know who I am? No. I'm Boston Blackie. That doesn't mean a thing to me. Oh, I think it does. You called Arthur Manletter's office and told him the bank wouldn't renew his notes. But he received a letter saying that if I were to go to 50 Hunter Street, the bank would renew. Maybe you know what you're talking about, but I don't. You've got to be the man behind a pretty shrewd frame-up, Partridge. Unless you're acting on somebody's instructions. Now, which is it? You know that if I raised my voice, you'd be shot dead by the bank guards before you could go through the front door? Well, I'd have company, Partridge, believe me. You. Inspector Faraday thinks I killed a man. They don't hang you twice for double killing. Why was I framed for the murder of Fred Visible? I don't know any Fred Visible, and I don't know anything about any telephone call that was supposed to be made by me to Arthur Manletter. Oh, no, you don't, huh? How about the renewal of Manletter's note? There never was any question about renewing Manletter's note. His credit is excellent. The note was renewed by me personally at 10 o'clock yesterday morning with a notary attesting to the time. And that was certainly long before my alleged phone call. Oh, you played it cozy, huh? You knew Manletter would call me, so you bluffed him. How long are you going to make me stand here? Can't you see there's nothing I know that can help you? Why don't you go? I will. I've got another stop to make. But the minute I leave this office, you'll call for help, of course. Of course. Oh, but you're not going to. You know, the only way you can do any calling, Partridge, is to talk in your sleep. Mr. Borden? Yes? I'm sorry to disturb you at your home. My name is Boston Blackie. How do you do, Mr. Blackie? I, uh, I came up here to see you, Mr. Borden, uh, about your bank. You mean about what used to be my bank? I'm sorry. Uh, who decided to replace you as president? The board of directors. Oh, well, and was it done suddenly? Yes, very. Uh-huh, and uh, where did John Partridge come from? I don't know. He'd been on our board of directors only a short while. Oh. I'm an old man, Blackie. The loss of my bank was a blow to me. Everything came so suddenly I hadn't gotten used to not being there anymore. Will you forgive me if I'd rather not talk about it? Oh, I understand, Mr. Borden. I... I'm going to try to get your bank back for you, but I need some help. Now, here's an address where I can be reached. Oh, you must have some loyal employee at the bank you can depend on, and would you call him and get him to find out something about Partridge? And if you get any information, send me a message. And uh, send that ring you're wearing with it so I know it's from you. I'll send you a message if I get it, but with just a paper clip on it. I haven't been able to get this ring off in years. The paper clip will identify my messenger. If I hear anything. Good. Give me a little help. I'll turn a murder over to Inspector Faraday, get rid of the charge against myself, and give you a bank right in your side pocket. We've got to stay down here at my waterfront hideout during the day, Shorty. Every cop in town is on our tail, and Faraday's sworn he won't sleep till he brings me in. It's okay with me, Blackie. Uh, and go ahead, it's your deal. You got me, let me see, you got me 60 to 17 and two boxes. Go ahead, <laughs> it's your deal. <laughs> you know one thing about gin rummy, it sure passes the time away. Yeah, it passes my dough away, too. <laughs> okay, you two, hoist him. Come on, Patsy. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. Now, look, Blackie, stand up and don't try no, no nothing foolish. I, I know all about you and your trucks. Well, I wasn't exactly going to ask you to pick a card. Who are you? A guy who ain't going to be outsmarted by you. Oh? Tie the little guy up, Patsy. Yeah, yeah, I'll tie him up. Good, too. Don't talk. Tie. Why, I'm tying him. He ain't going to go nowhere for a while. Okay. Suppose we start moving, Blackie. 
You ready, Patsy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm ready, Mug. Well, of course, don't anybody ask me. You're ready, Blackie. But you don't know for what. Now, start moving. Oh, this is a ride, huh? Okay. One way? Oh, I wouldn't say that, Blackie. We're coming back. Patsy and me. But we got orders to get you. Orders to get me, huh? Dealing in the Blackie market? You'll strain an arm reaching for jokes like that, Blackie. I thought that was rather clever, isn't it? But you might as well know something. Yeah? We ain't taking you on any gang ride. We're turning you over to the cops. Yeah, I'll bet. A couple of hoods like you wouldn't go within two miles of headquarters. I guarantee Faraday's got charges hanging over both of you guys. Maybe. Only he'll be so glad to see you, he won't be able to think straight. All right, let's get moving, Blackie. And remember, I'm the guy that's got the gun on you. Okay, Mug. But take my word for it, someday you're going to beg me to forget that. Blackie, there's something natural about the way you look behind bars. Yeah. They look good on you. Oh, thanks. You've got no idea how nice it is to see you sitting so sweetly in that cell. Now, Faraday, listen, I didn't knock off Fizzwell. No kidding. Oh, of course not. And you didn't throw your bathrobe over my head and tie me up either, did you, Blackie? Well, yes, I did do that, mm-hmm. Faraday. You know I did. <laughs> but I did it to help you. Oh, this is going to be good. Now, tell me how. Well, somebody knocked off Fred Viswell. Uh-huh. Your job is to catch murderers, Faraday. I, I had to be free to help you, see? Blackie, you should have been a lawyer. Thanks. Only you're overlooking a slight something. Your gun. Your pretty little gun. With your fingerprints on it. And a slug from it in Viswell's head and the bullet hole in your coat pocket. Nobody else killed Viswell, Blackie. You've got no alibi. You hated the guy, and your gun did the job. Looks like kind of a perfect job to me. This is a frame-up, Faraday. Now, you've got to do something you've never done before. Oh, what? Use your head. Look, you're in jail, Blackie, and you tell me to use my head. Don't you think this is a spot where you should use yours? Well, it seems as though Inspector Faraday is about to realize a lifelong ambition and has finally found a charge against Boston Blackie that will stick. However, that remains to be seen, of course. You know, you ladies really have it all over the men, folks, when it comes to being sensible about clothes. Come summertime, for instance, you know that one of the tricks of keeping cool is to look cool. And what could look cooler, crisper, and prettier than those bright cotton washables you wear? It's important, though, to remember to keep them bright and crisp. And that's where our soapy rich Rinso comes in. No point in working your head off in summertime, boiling and scrubbing clothes. And you don't have to with Rinso. A short soaking in Rinso suds, often as little as ten minutes, is enough. Then a few quick finger rubs on extra soiled places, and your clothes are ready to rinse. And believe you me, you'll be mighty proud of how your wash looks, too. Your lovely colored washable cottons will stay fresh and bright, week after week, wash after wash. And your white clothes... Well, it goes without saying, they'll be... <whistles> yes, Rinso White. So get Rinso next wash day for a Rinso White, Rinso Bright wash. And now back to Boston Blackie, starring Chester Morris. Blackie's in jail. Inspector Faraday knows that it was Blackie's gun that killed Fred Viswell, and Blackie can't clear himself while he's in prison. Into the cell block where Blackie is being kept walks a young lady. The policeman at the end of the corridor said I could come in and talk to all the other policemen in the whole jail, and you're the other policeman, so I thought I'd come over and talk to you. All right, miss. But about what? About the ball, of course. Everybody knows about the ball. What ball? The ball we're giving. But I'm selling tickets only to policemen. Well, now I've heard everything. Selling tickets to policemen for a civilian's ball. How much are they? A dollar. But the policeman at the end of the corridor said that if I came up... uh... Here's a dollar and keep the ticket. Uh-huh. And the next policeman is right down past this row of cells. Go bother him, will you, please? Yes. And uh, don't tell me that bag you're carrying is full of tickets. There aren't that many policemen. Oh, you're so silly. Of course not. I always carry a bag. It makes me look as if I'm always about ready to go someplace. Well, right? uh, you can go right now. I'll unlock the door. You can walk down the corridor till you find another cop at the end of it. Uh, his name's Murphy. Isn't every policeman? Oh, I don't know. All right, go. Go on, miss. Right down the corridor. Don't mind them mugs in the cells. Blackie. Jean, what are you doing here? This isn't visiting day. Blackie, listen. I've got to keep walking when the guard looks this way. Oh, don't be silly. Come in. The door's open. The cell door's open? Sure. Try it. It is. Blackie, how did you do that? Close the door. You know, I could open the cell door all right, Jean. That was a cinch. But I haven't figured out yet how to get past the guards at both ends of the guard. Oh, stop figuring it, Blackie. Here, look at this bag I brought. 
It's an outfit that matches the one I'm wearing, only it's a couple of sizes larger. Put it on, quick. What, and leave you in the cell? Oh, nothing doing, honey. Oh, I'll go out the door. I came in, Blackie, and you go out the other one. Only hurry. The guard might get curious. Okay. Well, it won't take me a second. Now, first roll my trousers up, and then on with the dress. <laughs> oh, oh, you brought a wig, too, huh? Mm-hmm. You think of everything. Can, uh, can I get into these shoes? Sure, you can. And hurry, Blackie. Yeah. Don't forget your hat. Say, it's a cute one. <laughs> All right, zip me up, will you? And I'm all set. <laughs> there. Oh. Now, just walk out, Blackie, and tell a cop at the end of the corridor. His name's Murphy. Tell him he ran out of tickets. Uh, can you talk like a girl? Who, me? Of course I oh, can. Oh, you better not talk. Bye, Blackie, <laughs> and luck. Meet me back in my apartment. Oh, thanks, Jean. You're wonderful. Mm, see you later, Blackie. You look awful cute in that outfit. Watch out for the wolves. Oh, not me. For once, I want to be on the receiving end of a... This is the house, Shorty, 50 Hunter Street. I don't know what I'd expect to find here, but let's go in. Why, boss? Well, maybe I can pick up something inside that'll give me a clue to that masked man. Uh, you see any lights? No. Nope, there ain't any but. Okay, now don't hit your flashlight till we close the street door. Oh, what kind of a lock is this? I don't know, but if you're working on it, it's an easy lock. I'll guarantee that. No, Shorty, it's an open lock. Come on in. Shh, quiet. Hit your flash, Shorty. Right. Yeah, this is the room where I got conked. The masked guy sat right over there facing me with his hands folded on that table, and he... Shorty. What? What happened? I know now who the masked guy was, Shorty. Yeah? I'm going to straighten out this whole mess. Wait till I look up a number in this phone book. Let's see. Uh, Who are you calling, Blackie? I'm calling the murderer of Fred Viswell. Wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah, here it is. Well, now let's hope I sound like the mug. Hey, boss, this a mug. Come right down to Hunter Street house. I got Blackie here. He's Hoyt. Oh, you want to talk to him? Okay. Talk to the boss, Blackie, or you get it again. Here, take the phone. So you're the boss, huh? Well, <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Applaud? Hey, give me that phone, Blackie. Okay, boss. Yeah. Yeah, that sure is Blackie, huh? Oh, you'll be right down? It worked, eh? Good. It? Yeah. What a swell. Okay, Shorty, now you beat it. I'm staying right here, and I'm handling this alone. But I have a job for you when you get outside. Okay, boss. It may decide who dies for the murder of Fred Viswell. And just between us, I'd rather it wasn't me. Mug, Mug, are you in here? Mug, turn on the light. It's dark. I can't see you. Turn on the light. Here's a light, Mr. Borden. Right in your face. Boston Blackie. That's right, Boston Blackie. (laughs) You had a very nice frame-up all fixed for me, but I think you're going down to explain it all to Inspector Faraday now. Do you? Well, I don't. So the phone call to me was a gag, eh? I might have known it was one of your tricks, Blackie, but I didn't. No harm done, though. I'll just leave. Oh, just like that, Mm -hmm. eh? Mm-hmm. And don't think you can threaten me, Blackie. As long as I'm alive, I'm a potential alibi for you. Only you and I know you didn't kill Fred Bearswell and that I did. And you've got to let me live in the hope that someday I'll confess. Mm, Yes, yes, I guess maybe I do. Oh, you're a pretty smart man, Borden. You'd have to be to have me in this kind of a jam. What did Viswell ever do to you? He thought he could outsmart me, the fool. Some private investors had him checking the books at the bank. Found that I'd taken quite a bit of money that didn't belong to me. And he thought he'd try a bit of blackmail... He didn't get very far. Pretty thorough, aren't you? I think so. How did you know I was the masked man, Blackie? Well, two ways, Borden. Yes? One was the fact that I gave you the address of my waterfront hideout and later your hoods paid me a visit down there. You were the only one that had that address. The other was that ring you're wearing. uh, You know, the one you told me you couldn't take off. When I came in tonight, I remembered the masked man was wearing that ring. You know, putting John Partridge in your place as president of the bank sounds like a wonderfully smart idea. It was. I was tired of working, and I can throw Partridge in jail any time I like for his little embezzlement job he did. So he must do as I say. And now, Boston Blackie, let's go visit Inspector Faraday. Well, no, Mr. Borden. I, I don't think I care to see the inspector tonight. No? Perhaps this gun will make you change your mind. I happen to know that Faraday has your gun... You're still under suspicion of murder, you know. And if you try to escape, Blackie, I'll think nothing of killing you in cold blood. You know, I believe you would, Borden. All right, 
All right, I'll go with you. I guess I'd rather be a live prisoner than a dead suspect. Here's Inspector Faraday's office, Blackie. Walk right in. Go on. Okay, if you say so, Borden. <laughs> Hello, Inspector. Say, look, don't you ever sleep? Hello, Blackie. I've been expecting you. You're a little late. Would you mind telling this gentleman in back of me to get rid of his gun, please, Inspector? He doesn't realize that it's impolite to point. His name is Arthur Borden. Okay, Mr. Borden, I'll take that gun. Certainly. Here you are. Well, looks like I've got a first-rate murder suspect right here in this room. <laughs> it certainly does, Inspector. <laughs> like to lock him up? In just a minute. In fact, I might as well do it very legal and proper. Arthur Borden, you're under arrest for the murder of Fred Viswell. What? Me? Why, I... David, I wish it was Blackie. Only it isn't. <laughs> We've got your confession in your own voice, right on a dictograph record. A dictograph planted in my Hunter Street house? Right. That's impossible. Nobody could have put a dictograph in there. You tell him, Blackie, you figured this thing out. Well, before you came into the Hunter Street house tonight, Mr. Borden, I dialed the inspector's private number on the telephone and left the receiver off the hook, you see. I had Shorty call him before and tell him to expect his private telephone to ring. All the while you were telling me how perfectly you would frame me, the inspector was listening on this end. Yeah, not only listening, but having the whole thing taken down on a record. <laughs> uh, say, Inspector, I did you a favor, didn't I, by turning up Viswell's murderer? You did yourself a bigger favor, but what's on your mind? Well, I'll tell you, Inspector. Shorty told me you have Jean Rochelle booked here. You said it, Blackie. She helped you escape from jail. Well, maybe she did, but uh, if she did, I brought you in a murderer, so you certainly owe her a favor, too, right? Well, maybe. What do you expect me to do, let her go? Sure. You've held her long enough. Now it's my turn. You've heard about making mountains out of molehills, but here's how to make mountains of dishes go right down to nothing in a hurry. You put some rinseau in your dishpan, and up go the suds. Plenty of thick suds from surprisingly little rinseau. And down goes that stack of dishes in practically no time. Yes, dishwashing is a mighty easy, simple job, with rinseau helping out. China, silver, glassware, they're all shining brightly in a jiffy with Rinso's soapy rich suds on the job. Why, even your pots and pans come clean easily when Rinso gets to work. Use Rinso, too, for all the soap and water jobs around the house. It's swell. Now a glimpse at next week's adventure of Boston Blackie. All right, Monahan, give me a little more juice in that light. No, no, don't do that. I can't stand it. That's better. Now, listen, Shorty, you say you don't remember what happened. I, I don't. I keep telling you I don't. All right, maybe you don't remember. You were slugged. Now, we don't want to know anything except one thing. Now, think hard, Shorty. Who was the last person you saw or talked to before you were slugged? Now, that's all we want to know. I'm thinking, Inspector Honest. I'm dizzy trying to think. I don't know. I just don't know. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, I remember now. The last person I talked to before I got conked was, uh... Well, was Boston Blackie. Be sure to listen in at this same time next week for another exciting adventure with Boston Blackie, starring Chester Morris with Richard Lane as Inspector Faraday. You can see Chester Morris as Boston Blackie at your favorite movie theater. Boston Blackie's latest Columbia picture is One Mysterious Night, soon to be released. Original music for the program was by Charles Cornell. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for the makers of Rinso and wishing you all a very pleasant good night. Warm weather's ahead, and that means greater danger from perspiration. Protect yourself. Use Life Boy in your daily bath. You know, of seven leading brands, Life Boy gives you the most soap for your money. And its rich, purifying Life Boy lather agrees with your skin. And don't forget, Life Boy is the only soap especially made to stop. This is the National Broadcasting Company.